Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to finish, start finishing some of these stamp sketches that I've been working on in the past two videos. The stamp sketches are a really good way to kind of get the feel of your stamps if you have a batch of new stamps or you're just new to scenic stamping in general, but that's just getting some compositions laid uh, out. You can do this type of thing on just copy paper or something like that if you want to just you know, do some really quick and numerous, you know, I don't know, amounts of uh, compositions playing around with your stamps, but I just do them on card stocks, different types of papers, and, and whatnot. Uh, when I'm doing them, because I plan on um, finishing them off, when I'm doing these sketches, I you know, a lot of times it occurs to me, oh, I want to do that in, or I envision that in, you know, a sunset tone or something like that, or twilight or midnight, I don't know, whatever snow or something like that, okay? Now some of them are kind of, you know, they're using snow stamps, so of course they're done, you know, in that uh, type of um, seasonal theme. Um, but, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different ways you can finish these um, scenes off. I mean, it could be winter in day, winter at night, you can do something with the moon or something like that, and that's how I envision this one right here. This one right here is done on a blue colored foil, and when I was doing it, I imagined it with um, a moon right in this spot. Or you can do like a North Star type of thing. Um, I thought I would do it with a moon, something that would be, in theory, casting a lot of natural light, you know, moonlight, of course, cool, a cool light in this um, type of setting. There's our moon right there, and we'll work in the same um, type of methodology that we applied our um, Brilliance white pigment ink here and you'll see how fast this goes. I put some stars up there, but that could be snowfall as well um, A lot of times when you know, there's a full moon out you don't really see a lot of stars, but That's what stamping's good for you can do whatever you want. Okay, now I'm going to put this there's um, some trees right in here I'm going to put a moon right in between the trees. This is just a simple hole punch. You can do a larger moon if you want to for a more dramatic type of um, setting. I'm going to start off with just a little, you know, just a standard hole punch right here. And again, I'm using the Brilliance Ink because that will dry on foil just fine. Okay. I'm just using 100% cotton cotton ball to apply this ink right there. And there we have our moon. Okay. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to create uh, in my scenes this dialogue between um, a light source and the reflected light in the setting, okay? Now on something like this, we just have, we have a thicker um, application of that pigment ink uh, for the moon, okay? Now one of the things that I can do in here now is I can um, raise the, uh, the, the value level of some of these areas down in the snow because uh, to reflect the, um, the lightness of the source of light. So you have uh, reflected lights, you know, reflecting uh, the light source in terms of the, um, I don't know, the lightness of it, okay? Not the brightness, means that, you know, in terms of color, we're talking intensity there, but this is just all going to be values. Dark, light, okay? Uh, dark would be, I don't know, zero, and let's say 100% in terms of the lightness scale. Um, absolute white would be 100, okay? Now, that's like a, I don't know, 90% white. Now, pigment ink dries a little bit darker, okay? So I can apply a little more um, pigment ink down here with the notion that it's going to um, dry darker. All right, so that's just a little 
side there, but um, let's go down here. Okay, now I laid down my white pigment ink and then I stamped my images over the top of it, okay? So when I use something like, uh, you know, in this case, cotton swab to apply this ink on here, it's going to be going over the black in here. So we're going to be losing some details um, of the piece, but we can um, fine tune it with, uh, you know, a white paint pen or something like that. And we'll be doing that too. Okay, so you can just use this like a little paintbrush, okay? But instead of painting 100% um, saturation of this, okay, we're going to be applying kind of a lighter version of it. Well, that's pretty, pretty light right there. I want to go for a little bit of a drier version, so I've inked this up. And this is what most of us are going to have to do, okay? We're going to have to blot this off a little bit in order to apply that lighter, drier amount of ink, okay? You want it to wear, um, you want your application process to be um, kind of a gradual one, especially when you start laying down um, this type of application of ink, okay? You wanna, you wanna have uh, control over the amount um, because when you have control over, him, over the amount, it just goes on so much smoother and then you don't have to do um, any or as much um, kind of uh, repair work, okay? Like if I get a big blob there, it's going to stand out too much, okay? But if I just apply, you know, like a f 2 or 5% version of white with each tap, you know, your level of kind of white intensity just goes up so slowly. It's like turning a, it's like having a dial with a thousand little notches and you're just doing it, you know, a couple notches at a time, as opposed to having a dial with 10 notches and you, and you have to skip these, you know, you have to jump up, you know, these big steps with, you know, each click right here. Right here, it makes it perfectly easy to apply, you know, just the right amount that you want, okay? Now, I mean, if it's just too dry and nothing is showing up after... 10 taps like that, you know, then certainly ink up a little bit more, tap lightly at first, get the feel of it every time you um, uh, get a new um, application of ink on your applicator, okay? Now on foils, one of the things that I'm noticing here is, and I've noticed it, you know, in the past when I've done these types of things, um, the Brilliant Zinc is a white pigment ink that um, can dry on non-porous surfaces such as foils like this, okay? So pigment inks in general as well, they are surface-oriented media uh, types of inks, okay? So in other words, dyes or something like that work by staining the surface, okay? Pigment inks kind of lay on the surface, okay? So that if you're kind of do or if you're doing this and you're building up a pretty good amount of ink, if you keep tapping on there, what you'll find is, because it's surface oriented, it's not drying so fast. Now, this will dry over time, or I could heat set it pretty instantly. Um, you have to kind of use a lighter touch if you want an application um, to happen, okay? It goes on there, it applies, but then when it builds up, sometimes if you're tapping uh, into that wet ink, you're kind of removing it too. So just get a feel for that. sometimes. If it starts removing too much, then you have to use like a lighter touch so that it's still applying, okay, as opposed to removing, okay. You'll get you'll get you'll get a feel for that um, when you start doing this, okay. So that's I'm just reiterating here what's on the design itself, okay. See like the tops of these rocks with that snow on them. I'm just doing the same thing, applying light into the light areas of the design. I'm not really applying it like on the rocks or something like that, you know, where there's dark shadow. I'm just kind of applying it where there's a lighter um, area of the design, okay? So you don't have to kind of invent areas or objects, areas on objects, where to apply this lighter area. Just follow the cues of the design itself. Now, it doesn't mean you have to hit everything, okay? Just use it as a general guide. Like this Q-tip right here 
isn't the greatest for getting into that really small area, like along that water. Let me see if I can get some of it. I, I guess you can get a little bit. Yeah, okay, well, that's not too bad. But see, I'm just kind of filling that area in like that, right next to my water. And I, like I said, I won't do it all. Okay, because we already have some white down there. That's why we can see it. Um, you just, you're just kind of pushing this um, area of that represents reflected light from the moon. Well, just a little bit more, okay? And what we want to do is we just want to kind of blend it in. But see how this area down here looks more three-dimensional with varying um, values. Okay, we have lighter lights, medium, darker, okay? And uh, I don't know, it's it. I feel that when we're doing this too, it's almost like, it's like stamp board or nowadays, these days it's called clay board, art tiles. It's like doing scratch board where you kind of scratch, you lay down some colors and you scratch back out the highlights. Normally we're working darker and darker on pieces, okay? We're adding shadows to, you know, a piece of white cardstock or something like that, okay? Because we're already working on light. This way we're working on dark, but it it's almost feels like um, where you use a different part of your brain when doing, when seeing light, okay, as opposed to applying shadows. And it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Uh, when I used to do my workshops, when we were, everyone was kind of working on their highlighting and seeing light, the room got really quiet. Um, it's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like a meditation or something like that. Um, when people are doing this type of thing, I feel. I don't know, I, 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 I theorize that it's accessing a kind of a different hemisphere of our brain and we're kind of developing that part, you know. Maybe it's because, you know, normally we're just not, we're applying, you know, we're using white pieces of paper or something like this. So this is kind of like the complementary um, kind of process to all of that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so anyways, I'm adding this down here in this little corridor of light, okay? Now here's a little tip right here. See, like underneath the trees right here, normally I would add like some black or something like that if I was working on a white piece of paper, so that I would add shadows, but the paper is already dark, right? So what you do is when you get into these areas next to our objects, you just don't fill it in with um, white, and that would represent um, the shadows right there. You're just working around the shadow areas and thus defining the shadows because the shadows are darker than the light areas, okay? So it makes it really easy and, and you know, in terms of that. I mean, you could go and add, you know, you can deepen your shadows with some additional black ink, but, you know, in this type of situation here, I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, so adding this in, I'm almost done here. I think this is a pretty full statement. I might want to, I don't know, lighten up some areas of my chapel here. I can put a little bit of the highlighting on you know, a couple of my tree areas. I won't do too much because I want kind of the snowy area to really stand out as the kind of the dominant reflected light area here. Okay. Um, so, like I said, a lot of the work was already done for us in making the impressions and the block out white in the background. Watch my previous video if you want to see that done or on a lot of the foil um, videos that are on the channel from this last year. Um, you can see this being done here. But All right, I think that is it. Let's get Good kind of feel for it here. All right, now see that moon up there? I'm looking at this right down here, and it's kind of a soft application and soft glowing light on our terrain down here, on our snowy terrain. I think I'm going to follow suit here with that same kind of softer texture here up around my moon. Okay, so the moon was done with my little cotton ball starting to... Uh, or cotton uh, swab is starting to fray too much here for what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to loosen up this side right here. Take some ink on this, okay? I should probably heat set that before I do this, but let me see if I can just do it directly, okay? Very light touch. I'm going to make, you know, put a little glowing um, perimeter around this moon, okay? I went into it with a little bit too much ink there, so I just blot it off and I'll blend that little blob out. Okay, so there's our little glowing moon now. See that? You can see the center of it still, but it has that little glowing perimeter. I think it matches with this area down here better now. All right. Okay, let me see that. I made the moon a little bit lighter, so maybe I'll add a little bit more light down here in a couple spots. I don't know, it's, just, it's very subtle, so. Um, with something like this, too, I, I'm getting some textures down here. I mean, I could get it smoother if I want to, but I, I do like the texture um, down here. I don't see snow as necessarily being, you know, absolutely smooth and flat, you know. I can, you know... It's piling up in some areas, you know, and by the day some of it has melted in some areas and it's kind of clumped, who knows, you know. But from a textural point of view, I think it just makes it more interesting to have variation than 100% uniformity with textures, with um, applications of ink, you know. You want to vary it. And a varied surface, potentially, can make for a richer visual um, than absolute uniformity with everything, okay? If you like things smooth, then have something next to it that's a little bit rougher so that the smoother part seems even smoother by contrast, okay? So you play contrast against one another. A lot of times these days, um, it seems like everyone's going for absolute smooth uniformity, absolute blended in, nothing else, okay? We're talking about that with Copic markers and colored pencils and everything like that, but, you know, it takes out of the consideration one of the biggest um, visual tools that we have in visual arts, which is texture and contrast. There's contrasting uh, contrasts in terms of um, value, light and dark, um, with what we're playing against one another, but there's textural contrasts as well. So I'd imagine, you know, I would suggest taking advantage of that and you're really utilizing that aspect of um, the visual arts into your, you know, your repertoire. Look for those types of opportunities, and um, it'll really enhance your pieces. And it, a lot of times, it's not really doing, it's not really adding more, but it's just, just retaining something like the texture that's going on down here. Okay, so that little bit aside, here's um, my white paint pen, and I'm going to add a few little highlights onto my tree or something, so I'm a little nooks and crannies between, you know, where like a limb meets um, the, um, the trunk of the tree, I can't think of it, the trunk of the tree, you can put a little, you know, a bit of snow or ice in that little area there. I'm just kind of adding some, you know, right up the, right up the trunk and on some of the limbs, okay? It's just a few little dots here and there, like that. See, like that? It kind of reiterates my lighting direction, too, all right? We can do this down here in the snow, too, like on the, you know, some of the snow, like I said. You vary it a little bit, so in maybe some of the lightest areas of the snow or the tops of some of these rocks, you can put a few little highlights like that, or the top of it is kind of reflecting more light, you know, like my hand here. There's more light up here, and it's darker down here. You can think of your rocks that way, okay? So this is like an area that's the top, okay? And here it is, it's a little bit lighter up there, and here that area is reflecting more of that light. And you see how it, these um, little highlights kind of turn the object in space. It may, in other words, it makes them look more three-dimensional that way by adding in that variation, okay? And 
see how great that looks in terms of a kind of a textural form. In this space, there's little dots, okay? Crisp little dots against kind of a, you know, the application of a pigment ink with a, you know, cotton swab. It's a, you know, large kind of area, relatively speaking, compared to a 0.7, you know, paint pen. See those little areas down here? See, it's kind of, I mean, this is really subtle in here, but look at how that kind of brings that area to life. Okay. We can put some back in here, too. This is called um, specular light. It's um, a light that's brighter than white. It's because it's reflected light. It's like a little sparkle or something like, like on this ink pad here. If I go like that, that's kind of more specular light. It's reflecting more of the light to us. But this is, you know, this is more white right here, this label right here. But this is specular light. So that's what you're kind of representing with this. This is white. But in contrast with everything underneath it, it looks lighter than, you know, uh, the other whites in the piece. All right, here's this little chapel, little columns. I won't do too much on this because, you know, if you put too much over certain objects, it looks like Christmas lights over something, okay? But little, you know, highlights on the column like that are kind of fun. And if you ever add something that you don't like, it's like, oh my god, that stands out too much. Just take it and wipe it right off, okay? Now, that being said, all of this has to be spray sealed because it's on foil. Now, this is going on here, and it's drying just fine, okay? But um, if you're going to be handling it, if you're going to be mailing it to someone, you know, in a Christmas card or something like that format, you'll want to spray seal these. Um, I, I, I was saying before, too, you can just throw it in one of those really super clear envelopes, you know, and they just, you know, people tend to display... Um, your cards in those clear envelopes, but I would spray seal this, um, you know, with a Krylon or something like that. Uh, and, I don't know, it just provides extra protection. But, when you spray seal these things, a very, very light dusting of spray, okay? It'll lay down, allow it to dry, a few seconds, you know, 10 seconds or something like that, 20 seconds. Then you hit it again with a very light spray again, hit it from 12 inches away or so, It'll spray it over, okay? And then what that does is it puts some light dusting on the t over the top of it that dries very quickly. And then you keep doing that um, a few times so that you're never hitting this area in here, this, you know, this media, and it's not sitting in wet acrylic spray and kind of, you know, spreading out or blending, okay? Um, bleeding uh, before it dries, even though it would dry very fast, but, you know, that's the solvents in, um, you know, spray um, acrylics or something like that can potentially um, uh, make, you know, something like pigment inks bleed. All right? So it's, it's not hard. Just do it in um, layers, very thin layers, as opposed to one real thick one or something like that. Sometimes I get a little impatient, you know, and I, I'm doing, you know, 30... <laughs> I'm spray sealing 30 things, you know, because that have built up for me, you know, and I'm going out there, and it's like sometimes I do hit it a little bit too much. So I do get it, you know, and wanting to kind of expedite the whole process. Uh, okay, so anyways, I'm adding a little bit more in here. You see that right there? Uh, but look at that. See that little passage of light in there? Isn't that really fun? It, looks, it makes it look a little bit more magical. When you add these types of little touches in here, like that. All right. So, anyways, um, I don't know. I, I would, uh, you know, in terms of matting, I'll do that maybe on a separate video. But matting on something like this or mounting, uh, I don't know, maybe a blue, like a little, a thin white in between. See the thin white from a textural standpoint. Like that, it really kind of picks up the little detail work that we did, you know, with the white pen. Like that, okay. Keep it real thin, like that, I think. And this is just a piece of blue star dream. I don't know, something like a black piece of paper would look great, you know, a black card or something like that. Um, that would be uh, my suggestion. You know, something dark. I don't know, maybe go on something light too. 
you can do kind of this and, you know, put a, another white around that. I don't know. I usually do maybe double mounts on my pieces. I usually don't go for three, but yeah, you certainly could. If you kind of incorporate um, that white in there, you can even go with like a, oh, let's see. Let's take a look at, I'm thinking of a um, silver foil. Let me see if I have some, yeah, I got some holographic foil here. Let me see if I have a piece of silver. This is, um, yeah, this isn't dark enough. This is a silver star dream right here. It's kind of more of your iridescent silver. Yeah, that wouldn't be enough contrast, I don't think. There, like something like that. Although it doesn't look too bad, you know, with that white and silver. Um, oh, I found it here. I don't know if this will look good or not. Let's see. It's, uh, foil on foil. Oh, not bad in terms of like the Christmassy. I mean, this, these foils like this, these mirrored foils like that. I mean, it certainly makes it more festive. So you can kind of imagine that around all four corners, something like that. Those foils are really cheap. Um, here's the Star Dream. I don't know, but you can put a comment down in the comment section. What's your vote for? Blue Star Dream. It's an iridescent. Provides kind of a textural contrast against the more mirrored style of foil. And again, here's that silver like that. The silver is even more reflective and dominant as far as a reflective surface. It kind of mellows out, by contrast, the foil aspect of this because it's just kind of a, you know, more muted foil than the, you know, super chromed out one. And then here's the... Uh, silver of the um, star dream silver. I don't know. That looks pretty good too, but you can't really see the white kind of border though on this one as much. So I notice you can put the comment down which one you want me to do. If one person answers, then maybe they win, you know. If they choose the silver star dream, I don't I don't know if I'd go for that one. <laughs> I'll mount it up on whatever you guys say. Okay, so anyways, uh, here's that piece right here. Now, look at the thing about the silver. You know, the, the, like in this light right there, you can barely see the chapel, but see, <laughs> these pieces are kind of interactive because people look at them like this, you know. You know, they look at them, and they'll be kind of moving them around, so... They're a very interactive style of surface to work on and also very dynamic. Now this one's kind of the more one of the more muted looking ones because it's kind of a darker foil, but look at the difference that you can look at the difference in um, I don't know contrast the visuals when you look at it this way, with all of that super reflected light on there at certain angles. Look at that snow really stand out in there. But then you go like that. It, Something that's very light, like right in here, is like one of the darker areas in this uh, space down here. So one of the lightest areas right in here, because it's reflecting so much light, to the darkest, right? So it goes with extremes like that, and there's everything in between. So I'd always, you know, I'd really suggest playing around with this stuff. Um, it's just so much fun, the reflective types of surfaces. Um, and... If you're doing that, the brilliant sinks, okay? The brilliant sinks dry on this, okay? This not might be might not be absolutely dry right now, but you can heat set it in, you know, a couple seconds or something like that. And uh, you know, you can go on with your work, okay? And uh, I don't know, they're the only types of inks, especially the white that I can think of to do this. You can um, probably lay down the white, and then you can probably stamp your objects in like a stays on though. Uh, over the top of it. Okay, but it, when you do additional, like, white embellishment, um, the Brilliant Sinks will uh, really do the trick for you.
Okay, so again, thanks again.